Hey guys, it's Pingu here with part 23 of the Dwarf Rush tutorial. Um, I'm Mr. Hindsight because I wanted to mention this. I'm digging straight down because these magma pools are located straight in the center. So you see almost identically uh, right in the middle there. Um, you can use this to advantage and you can actually even dig out a little bit to the side so you don't end up digging down into <laughs> the magma. Uh, somebody might fall if that's even possible. Um, but we can go further down and see that there's a it's it's forming a sea, and there's even some creatures down here. Oh, I missed them. Where did he go? There's, there there are some dangerous creatures down here. Um, further, and we don't want to spend too much time uh, down this cavern really, but we don't have a choice uh, because I've kind of uh, done a bit improvised uh, digging, and uh, we have a bunch of entry points into our uh, into our cavern system, which is not good whenever sort of uh, any sort of nasties want to come up. So. I want to make a I want to make a cage trap. I've already covered these, so I won't break down and stuff. I'm just going to make some cage traps here to cover anything that wants to uh, visit our dwarves upstairs. And uh, but until then, we're going to uh, start digging out a dwarven reactor. Now, uh, power is a uh, kind of uh, underutilized thing in in dwarf fortress. I'm clearing out this glass uh, furnace because I don't want it here anymore. But um, Power is used for a few things. Um, one of them, milling stone and moving any sort of water around, so you can uh, move water around in the game. And uh, I'm going to uh, dig out an area just like this. Now, it doesn't have to be a, a, this a, identical to this. Um, I th I think this is fine. Yeah, this this should be fine. And uh, so just a little three by three area. We're going to have water wheels on the side of these three area the tiles, and then three over here. So we're actually going to channel these out. And we're going to have a screw pump uh, over here, which pumps water from down below up onto the tile above. So we will have we'll be able to pump water up, and then it can splash over and power these water wheels. So we can have perpet perpetual motion, because Door Fortress has perpetual motion. Um, these screw pumps take very little to actually operate. Um, down here, I'm digging out 3x3, three three, uh, a little, little Y shape, uh, almost Y. Uh, kind of corresponding to the channeling because we're just going to have water sitting down here and then a little higher we're just going to have our, our mechanisms up here. I'm going to uh, also build a staircase all right over here so down staircase uh, down stairway and then an up stairway so we can actually dig out these areas. Um, I think we, we, we could I uh, know actually we, we don't even need that um, thinking about it our door should be able to uh, figure out, because when you channel down it has those down ramps, so uh, if I can actually... Oh, it's just, just just for making it easy, make these upward and downward staircase. It's not worth uh, testing if your dwarves can get stuck or not, because when they do get stuck it is uh, unfortunate, because uh, you have to end up uh, doing a lot to get them out. Um, while that's being dug out, we also have some captives over here, some uh, unfortunate uh, individuals. And uh, what, what's this guy? So we've got a uh, gremlin here. A gremlin drive it away. Ooh, scary. So I'm going to... Uh, these are stuff that comes out of the caverns. I'm just going to have out my soldiers go kill that. Uh, but we have some captured prisoners over here. Um, I have a bunch of cage traps in the front because it's very good. Of, uh, easily disposing with enemies. It's like Weapon traps will hurt your enemies, but cage traps will kill them because you can do whatever you want with them. And that includes just setting up a giant ambush team and re uh, releasing them, or even just, uh, I'm going to drown them to death. Uh, might as well. A uh, few things you want to, I've already built a few cages down here. These are permanent ca cages, and these guys are, uh, are not placed yet, so you can't select them as buildings. But you can strip them of their weapons. Uh, it's a bit finicky. What you want to do is D, B, and D. So you want to dump them first. So you mark them purple, and then you want to reclaim them. So we've, we've set them to be dumped, and now we're saying, oh, we don't actually want to dump them. Now go in with K and individually choose the, choose the cage not to be dumped. Now, theoretically, this should have our dwarfs go and, yep, grab all the weapons and armor from these uh, caged individuals without actually re letting them go. Um, there's a few ways to release these guys, but I will cover them in a second. I will uh, dump all this stone, because it's kind of unsightly. And uh, we only get one chance to dump it because we will f fill up this bottom area with uh, the water. Um, so we're going to do that now. Hit I for zones. 
I'm going to make a zone over here and turn it into a pit pond. Now hit P for that. By default, this is a, now a pit. It is not a pond. If you want to make it a pond, hit capital P and hit F to say is pond. Um, now we will have one of our dwarfs um, fill it up with water, uh, bring buckets in uh, you know, by, manually. So uh, this can take a while. If you actually want to make it go faster, you can. I'm going to remove this zone and uh, going to make individual zones here. So I'll make this a pit and pond and make it a. You see, this can this can take a bit of time, especially with the whole. I have to set it to actually be a pond thing. But by setting them individually like this, we actually can now have three dwarfs uh, take buckets at once to fill up uh, just those same three squares. You can do it for the other channels if you want, but that should be fine for now. Um, we now have stripped them of the weapons, and in order to uh, build the cage, you hit B, and then J. Oh, sorry, I hit J a bit too soon. Uh, go down cage, which is actually at the bottom. Uh, J. And uh, when you go over and hit enter, you'll see it gives you a choice. You, what, what type of cages hold these guys? You don't know, so uh, hit X to expand. And now you can see what the cages actually hold. So we have a human cage over here and a goblin cage that I'm going to build uh, over here. And uh, that should be it for this tutorial. Uh, next part, we will show you how you can uh, selectively release these cages and how to uh, build a <laughs> the fantastic uh, dwarf and reactor we've got going now. This is a very... Try and memorize this build. It's uh, very, very effective because you could build a water wheel on our aqueduct. All you have to do is build a water wheel uh, that's above any sort of stream, any sort of flow, but this doesn't exactly have the best flow. I mean, it might. You can see all the sixes going around, but... Uh, it's it's so much easier just to manually make a, a pond like this. It really is, because uh, uh, you'd want to make some pumps anyway to make sure that you guarantee a flow for your water wheel, because you want power the entire time, and you get more than enough power with this setup, like way too much power if anything. And uh, that's it for this part. I will see you next tutorial.